Hi, I'm Tina Granis. Hmm. The album was quite a, a journey for me. Um, having left the label and decided I'm going to take all of this on my own, it was a very personal project. You know, I was in the studio over the course of a year, in there for every second and every second of the mixing, but you know, I chose these songs that I had written over the past many years, and it was just, you know, every aspect of this album was personal and important to me. And so it was quite intense. It was a lot more than I ever expected, but definitely worth it in the end because it just means that much more to me, you know. You know, one thing I did learn is that it's very, very difficult to put, on an, put out an album on your own. And while it's incredibly gratifying, I did get a little burned out as far as, you know, the few weeks leading up to the release. You start to lose yourself as an artist because you're just businessman and just label at that point. And so I've learned that in the future, it's okay to take help. <laughs> I will probably need help next time. Um, and, but I just learned so much putting it out last time and I think that will really help the next time I release because I kind of know what steps I need to take as I go and stuff like that. I can't exactly say, I'm not positive, but that my songs have been kind of changing and evolving into this slightly different sound. I mean, it's still me, but I think it's a little more honest and it's kind of the sound I've been looking for for a while. It feels more Kina to me. Not that that tells you anything, but um, I'm really excited for whenever that is that I have a next album, so. I think, well, you know, as an artist you're always growing and as a person you're always growing and me in particular, I've always had a lot of walls up. <laughs> I'm just not one of those people who is comfortable just being myself all the time. And so definitely as the years have gone by and I've started to learn a little bit more about, you know, who is Kina and who do I want to be and who am I comfortable being. And so I think while I'm growing as a person, my music is slowly becoming more, more me, you know? Ooh, biggest thing I've learned about myself. Probably, I've learned a lot of things. I think one is that I need to trust myself. I've always been the type of person that I want to know what everyone else thinks and I want them to vote and them decide what I do so it's not on me because I just don't trust myself. But over the past years, having all these new responsibilities and actually doing this on my own, I have had to make a lot of decisions and they all seem to be working. And yet I still go through the stress every time there's a big decision of like, what do I do? What's the right thing? I don't know. But um, I'm starting to find that if I trust myself, like your instincts are usually not too far off. So. The fan connection is everything to what I do, basically. Um, I owe everything to them. And I just love having them be a part of the process, you know, from the beginning of me winning the Crash the Super Bowl, that was all fans voting for me every day for two months. And then, you know, since then, it's been me and my fans on YouTube kind of getting to know each other and working through this crazy journey. And um, it's just really been amazing. They are incredibly supportive and, you know, they're out there sharing my music with the world. And I just like them to be a part of the process as much as possible. It can be difficult. I really, really enjoy it, which is good. Like, I love Twitter and I love being able to answer everyone's questions and things like that. But the balance is difficult because I find that suddenly I'll disappear from the normal world and I'll just be like this crazy online person. And then, you know, my friends and family are like, hey, it's, what are you doing? And so I do need to remember to balance it. And also, I think people knowing that I am accessible, it's all, it's amazing, but there is a part of it that makes me feel really guilty because I know that I could be responding to everyone. Of course, I would never write another song if I responded to everyone, but there's that feeling of like, I, they're right there. I could respond to everyone's tweets and everyone's emails. And so, I um, think she's almost done pouring. So yeah, it, it's a, a strange balance, but I love it. It's kind of something that happens with, you know, Twitter and the way my YouTube videos are that I'm kind of talking to them. They really do, in a sense, know a lot about me and just my personality and stuff like that. So I, I feel like when I meet people, there is a comfort level that is different than normal people would have because it's like, well, we've talked on Twitter so many times, right? So it's interesting. 
I like my technology. <laughs> I guess for me, it's that technology is the thing that allows me to do what I love for my life. Um, whether that's the internet or my laptop that I'm on for most of my waking hours or my iPhone and things like that. And so they're really just completely intertwined into my life. And, you know, some people are kind of like, isn't that hard to keep up with? And you have so much things to, you know, deal with. But to me, it's just from the very beginning been how I did it and how I connect and how I share. So I'm just so grateful for these things because if not for them like what would I be doing <laughs> you know you know the dig people are all amazing and I love them and a lot of the supporters that came from dig and have stuck with me are just awesome people and they're all tech minded so I love them we're like nerds and it's super <laughs> you know it's interesting for my entire life acting has been probably one of my greater fears like I had an experience in high school where it was in front of a class of 25 people I know really well and I was doing a five minute skit with my best friends and I think I ended up in the bathroom crying. <laughs> I'm just like, can't do it, it freaked me out and I'm not sure why. And so when the Wong Fu guys approached me and asked me, actually David Choi called me up, he's like, Kina, Wong Fu wants you to do this, you should do this. And I was like, I don't act, I, I can't, sorry, hang up and David calls me back and he's like, no Kina, you have to do this, you're gonna be so good, I know it, you're gonna be natural, you have to do this. And I kept being like, no, I can't, I can't, I can't. He's like, just do it. So finally, somehow he convinced me and I was so freaked out. And I had a little breakdown the night before the first shoot, <laughs> I won't lie. Um, but I did it and it was so fun and I loved working with everyone. And so now my mind has been a little bit open to the idea of acting because it actually was fun once I stopped crying about it. I've always kind of had a strange approach to fashion in that I don't know a ton about it, but I love observing the way that people decide to look, you know? And so throughout high school and everything, watching how people dressed, and then I was wearing like crazy stuff, like always different colored socks and like this crazy big purple skirt and just kind of trying to get people to be like, what? Um, so it's been something I'm always interested in and I guess now that I've gotten a little older, I'm trying to be a little less weird, but it's still such an interesting way to express yourself physically, you know? And so I'm having a lot of fun with that. And my little sister's like fashion queen, so I do get some tips there. <laughs>